We're back with part two of our chapter eight video lectures covering markups and markdowns, perishables, and break even analysis. At the end of our first lecture, we focus on determining the selling price when the actual markup is based upon the selling price. Recall that the lamp had a cost of $100. The desired profit is 65% markup on the selling price. And the question asked was what are more selling price and what would be the actual dollar markup? So again, selling price equals cost plus markup. The cost we know is $100. The markup would be 65% of the selling price. Using our algebra skills, we want to solve for the unknown being the selling price. So we're going to combine the variable like variables that gave us 0.35s equals the cost, divide both sides by 0.35, therefore the selling price equals $285.71. So the markup would be the selling price minus the cost. If I take my sales price minus the cost of 100, the markup on the lamp would be $185.71. 71 cent. So what does that mean? What this really means is that you're paying a price, in this case, uh, a lot higher than what the lamp actually costs. The lamp only costs $100, but you're paying a price of $285.71. The 65% markup again is not based upon the cost, like in our previous example, the markup here is based upon the actual selling price. Next example. Jill is selling tennis rackets for $50. To make her desired profit, Jill needs a 40% markup again on the selling price. What is the dollar markup? What do the tennis rackets cost Jill? So again, selling price equals cost plus the markup. And our markup again is based upon the selling price of $50. So we see the selling price equals cost plus 40% of 50, which is $20. If we desire, if we, so the markup will be the $20. We're trying to solve for the cost in this situation. So the cost is going to equal $30. So again, if you know any two of these three unknowns, then we can solve for the unknown variable. This is just showing you how to convert the percent markup on cost to the percent markup on selling price. So if I know the percent markup on cost, to convert that from the selling price, take the percent markup on cost, divide that by one plus the percent markup on cost. If you recall from our previous example, the markup on cost was 27.78%. To convert that to a percent markup on selling price, the percent markup on selling price ended up being 21.74%. Or opposite, if we know the percent markup on selling price, convert that to a percent markup on cost, it's a percent markup on selling price divided by one minus percent markup on selling price and that would give us the percent markup on cost. So this is just showing you how to go from the convert percent markup on cost to percent markup on selling price, or the opposite, how to convert the percent markup on selling price to the percent markup on cost. You got that? Confusing? Just take your time and go over it and work on a few problems do those type of calculations. Now, we've been talking about marking prices up, but on occasion, there may be an actual markdown of price. So a markdown means that the new selling price is going to be lower than the original sales price. To get the markdown percent, we'll take the amount of the markdown in terms of dollar, divide that by the selling price to get the markdown percentage. For example, Sears marked down a $18.02 set to $10.80. Two questions, what are the dollar markdown amount? 
and what is the markdown percentage. So to get the markdown amount, it's just the original sale price minus the new sale price. Therefore, the markdown as an amount is $7.20. As a percent, you take the dollar markdown divided by the original price to show that number as a percentage. So $7.20 divided by 18, meaning this item was marked down a total of 40%. Price and perishable items. So when you deal with items that are uh, food items, sometimes those items are going to go bad. They're going to spoil. So we look at how those companies do pricing on perishable items. We have Almond Vegetable Stand grew 300 pounds of tomatoes. He expects 5% of those tomatoes to become spoil and not sellable. The tomatoes cost Alvin 14 cents per pound and he wants a 60% markup on cost. So now his markup is going to be based upon cost. We're saying what well price per pound, selling price, should Alvin charge for the tomatoes? What you think? Well, let's work it out. So first, let's look at the total cost Alvin paid. He grew 300 pounds of tomatoes, and the cost is 14 cents per pound. Therefore, his total cost is going to be $42. The markup is going to be 60% of the cost. So the total sale would be the total cost plus the total markup. Here's our formula. So we know that the total cost is $42, and the markup is going to be 60% of the $42. When you add those two together, it would give us total sales price of $67.20 would be the total sales price. We're not done. Now, remember in this situation that we expect 5% of the tomatoes to be small and not sellable. We still want to read total sales of $67.20, okay? In order to do that, we're going to take the total sales, 67.20, and divide it by 285 pounds, not 300, because again, we expect 5% or 15 pounds of tomatoes to be spoiled. So we look at the amount of tomato we expect to sell, which is 285 pounds. So total sales is $67.20, divide that by 285 pounds. Therefore, the price per pound we'll sell tomatoes for is $0.24 cent per pound. So yes, you may be surprised to find out that perishable items, they do charge us even for the item they expect they can't sell because they have a set desired goal for total sales based upon the amount of item they expect to actually sell. Interesting? Yes, it is. Next, we'll skip scoots. I can't even talk. We're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about what's known as a contribution margin. I think I need some water. Okay, I'm back. Contribution margin is the selling price of an item minus its variable cost. For example, Assume that the Jones Company produces pens that have a selling price of $2 and a variable cost of $0.80. Cent. So what this means is that the variable cost is going to be $0.80 cent per, per pen that we sell, and the selling price is going to be $2. So if I subtract the variable cost from the sales price, it gives me what's known as my contribution margin. So my contribution margin is going to be a dollar and twenty cent per pen that I sell. So variable cost is a cost per unit. Okay, so our variable cost is going to be eighty cent per pen. However, in business we have something that's known as fixed cost. 
So fixed cost is going to be a set price that's not based upon how many pens we sell. For example, think about the rent on your apartment or your monthly mortgage. That's what we call a fixed cost. No matter how many days you stay at home, your fixed cost is going to be the same amount. So in business, to get our break-even point, meaning that our total cost equals total sales, we the formula is fixed cost divided by the contribution margin. So in our case, again, this company has fixed cost of $60,000. Each pen sells for $2 with a variable cost of $0.80 cent per pen. So what we're asking ourselves is how many pens must we sell to at least break even? Meaning that total cost will be equal to total sales. We're using our break even point formula. We'll take our fixed cost of $60,000 divided by the contribution margin, which is $1.20 per pen, which means that we must sell 50 thousand pins in order for us to break even so think about it if we sell 50,000 pins the sale price says two dollars per pin right so they give us one hundred thousand dollars our variable cost is 80 cent per pin so 80 cent times 50,000 is 40,000 in cost your fixed cost is sixty thousand dollars so it means that if we sell 50,000 pens, then our total cost will be the same as our total sales, and therefore we have broke even. Let's go through a few examples of the concepts we've learned in Chapter 8. For our first problem, our cost is $500. The markup is going to be 20%. We're asking the question, what would be the actual dollar markup and what's going to be the selling price? So selling price equals cost plus the markup. In this case, the markup is based upon 20% of the cost. So cost plus a 20% markup of the cost would give us a selling price of $600. If the selling price is $600, and the cost is 500, then the dollar marker will equal $100. So this problem is a problem based upon the markup is based upon 20% of your cost. Okay. Next problem. Selling price of office furniture is $6,000. The percent markup on cost is going to be 40%. So we're saying this sales price is a markup of 40% on the cost. They're asking what is the actual cost. So again, sales price or cost equals selling price divided by one plus the percent markup on cost. The so sales price we know is going to be 6,000. The percent markup is going to be 40% or 0 0.40C. We could take 6,000 and divide that by 1.40. This represents the cost plus the four percent markup on the cost. Therefore, the original cost is four thousand two hundred eighty-five dollars and seventy-one cent. So again, your sale price is six thousand. Your cost is four thousand two eighty-five seventy-one, and we can check that by taking the cost six thousand. I'm sorry to go back to 6,000 by, by, by the 1.40, and that would give us the cost of $4,285.71. Okay, so be sure to review the video lecture for Chapter 8 on how to determine the markup, the markdown, how to count for perishable items, and how to calculate your contribution margin.